Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course aspects of biochemical engineering. Uh, now we, we are discussing this kinetics of homogeneous chemical reaction and last lectures couple of lectures we try to concentrate that uh, how to uh, how to how to write the mathematical expression for the irreversible chemical reaction, how to write the uh, expression for the reversible chemical reaction, how we write the expression for the chain reaction. And I, I mentioned that most of the biochemical reaction, their, uh, their, uh, their chain reaction and uh, they are reversible in nature. Now, in case of chain reaction, our main emphasis is that how uh, if you look at the profile of the different component present in the reaction mixture, that we find that first component will keep on decreasing with respect to time and last component will be uh, will be keep on increasing with respect to time but all intermediate compounds they will increase and then decrease so our intention was that uh, how to find out that at what time we will get the maximum amount of this intermediate uh, product form intermediate uh, product formation that uh, takes place in the system so in the last um, uh, lectures we try to derive the equation for the different component present in the reaction mixture then also we try to discuss this uh, reversible uh, 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 reversible chemical reaction and i told you at equilibrium condition rate of forward reaction should be equal to rate of backward reaction and uh, and uh, and equi equilibrium constant equilibrium constant is equal to concentration of product divided by concentration of substrate now in case of uh, the reversible reaction that uh, question comes what should be our strategy to maximize the product formation the, our strategy will be that I, I try to mention that as soon as the product form that uh, when the product if you, uh, the product if you take out from the system then what will happen that uh, more substrate will convert it to a product to maintain the kc constant kc is the equilibrium constant so this is how we can increase the uh, product uh, product yield of the process or product uh, concentration of the pro product yield of the process another approach through which we can increase the product formation because if we add more substrate because since this is the ratio of concentration of product divided by the concentration of substrate so if we add more substrate we will get more product in the uh, in the in the process so the, through this um, uh, the approach we can we can increase the product yield i can keep a typical example that in case of ethanol fermentation process ethanol is a volatile component if we apply some vacuum we can we can we can we can vaporize it out so your product concentration decreases so more substrate will be converted in the product now today i am i am going to discuss the uh, some numerical problems four numerical problems i am going to discuss in this lecture and first numerical problem deals with <coughs> deals with that uh, that you know that first order reaction it is a very simple reaction a to b and uh, if you look at the rate this rate of reaction is given as 0.2 moles per liter per second where when ca equal to 1 mole per liter what is the rate of reaction when ca equal to 10 mole per liter so so one condition is there suppose uh, we we have um, we know that if you if you look at the ca versus time if a actual profile is like this so in this problem that you know that uh, maybe uh, this uh, we have uh, at at uh, at uh, uh, so at uh, you, you at different concentration you have to find out what is the what is the what is the rate of reaction so the, this is uh, we find at ca this is the rate rate of reaction is this 
and uh, see the, that when you, you, when the concentration is C 10, that uh, this, this might be 10 and this might be 1. So, at different concentration what is, so uh, if, you, if you look at the equation, it is d C A by d T equal to K into C A. So, as your concentration increases, your rate of reaction is supposed to be increases. So, that, uh, that we shall have to find out and um, to, to do this, so what we shall have to do that, uh, that, uh, that uh, first uh, this is the ra rate equation that we have and we put the value, this is R A is 0.2 and this is, point, this is 1 mole per liter. So, so here we can, we, can, we, can, we can calculate the value of K, this is the value of K we can easily calculate it this is about 0 0.2 to the second inverse and then we put this value in the rate equation. This is 0 0.2, so our equation now change to minus R A equal to 0 0.2 into C A. Now, uh, so we shall have to find out that at when C A equal to 10 moles per liter, what is the rate of reaction? We put the, this is uh, into, into 10, then it is 2 moles per, the, the, this is the rate you will get uh, this uh, re reaction per liter then 10 mole per liter, then uh, then this will be equal to this 10 mole per liter, then we will have to uh, that, that increases, that higher substrate as I told you, as the substrate concentration increases, this value also will be increases. Now, next problem that we have deals with one human system, human being 75 kg consumes about the 6000 kg of food per day and assume that food is uh, all glucose and that the overall reaction is, uh, is like this. That is uh, the same as uh, when glucose, we burn it, the same kind of reaction will take and if you take in our system, we will get a similar type of results because that 6 moles of carbon dioxide and 6 moles of water. Now, the, we, are, we have heat of reaction is uh, 2816 kilojoules per mole per so, what we shall have to find out that what is the metabolic rate in terms of moles of oxygen used per cubic meter volume per second. So, this is the this is the, the things we shall have to find out. Now, how we can do that? Because first we shall have to find out that how much energy is the energy we are consuming. We are energy we are consuming about 6000 kilojoules. Am I right? Now, if you if you if you find out the heat of reaction of glucose is uh, <coughs> 208.15, 16, this is this we have. So, if you divide by that, then we can find out for consuming uh, this much of energy, how much moles of glucose is required. The moles of glucose that is required that we can calculate. Now, once you know that moles of glucose required uh, for getting this much of energy, and from this reaction, from this reaction we can find out for 1 mole of glucose, you require 6 moles of oxygen. So, once we, we calculate this, if you multiply by 6, that we will get that how much moles of oxygen that is required in this process. Now, if we divide this with the volume of the man, then, then we can find out that what is the oxygen used per cubic meter percent per second. Let us see how we can solve it. So, our ray, our equation is this, our equation, what is the rate equation we have? Minus uh, R O 2 means uh, this is the D N O 2, this is the moles of oxygen consumed per cubic meter, this is cubic meter volume of percent per second. So, this we shall have to find out, this is our destination. Now, first we shall have to calculate what, what is the volume of man whose weight is 75 uh, kg. Now, if you want to know the volume of the person or the man, then we shall have to first, we should know what is the density of the man. Now, if you, if we know the, the human contains mostly the water. So, if we assume the density of the human body is uh, close to the water, that is 1000 kg per cubic meter, then if we divide by that, we will get the volume. This is the volume of the person, we can easily calculate. Then uh, if you come here, then I told you that 6000 uh, kg per day we are consuming, the, the person is consuming energy 
and this is the uh, heat content of uh, glucose. Then uh, if we divide by that we can find out for getting this much of energy how much glucose is required. Then if you multiply it by 6 moles of because 6 moles of oxygen is required for the consumption of 1 mole of glucose. So, if you multiply that we will get how much moles of oxygen is required per day. Now, I, 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 I want to tell you here that uh, here what is the unit that you have moles of oxygen used per cubic meter per day am I right. Now, question come how we can convert to per units per seconds. So, this I can show it like this that uh, suppose, uh, suppose we, we have the data that uh, uh, moles of oxygen moles of oxygen per cubic meter per day. How you can convert it mole oxygen per cubic meter per second? How we can convert? We can convert very easily. How we can convert this is mole of oxygen cubic meter. Now, this is day am I right? So, I can write, so here I can write one day, one day is equal to 24 hours. Then we can write one hour is equal to how much 60 minutes and then we can write one minutes this is multiplied by 60 seconds. So, so what what basically we shall have to do we shall we shall have to multiply it by 1 by 24 into 60 into 60 to get the value in terms of cubic meter per second. So, this is what what we have we have, we have done in this uh, in the in this particular place that that you can see that how we, we have calculated this has come about 0 0.002 moles of oxygen used per cubic meter per second. Next problem that uh, we deals with uh, the pasteurization process. Now, as I mentioned that pasteurization is a, uh, the process through which we can we can kill the germs. Uh, uh, so, mostly the pathogenic organisms, uh, but when we kill the uh, pathogenic organism obviously, some non pathogenic organism also killed, but the main purpose of uh, pasteurization is kill the pathogens organism. Now, it has been observed that at low temperature we required more time. So, at 63 degree centigrade it required uh, pasteurization time required is 30 minutes, but if it heated to uh, 74 degree centigrade only 15 seconds in Newton and for the same results uh, find out the activation energy for the uh, for the sterilization process. Now, here um, I want to tell you one interesting thing that why this this technique this process we call it HTHT technique HTHT technique HTHT means high temperature short time techniques because we find that uh, if we uh, that you know that if you if you if you keep the material at a, low, a smaller time then your destruction of the nutrient particularly vitamin or amino acid will be comparatively low as compared to that of uh, if you keep it for longer period of time. The reason is that uh, the deactivation energy requirement for the vitamins and amino acid is much less as compared to that of microbial cells. So, microbial cells require more activation energy as compared to that of uh, uh, the amino acid and the vitamins. So, at low temperature it is uh, it is always detrimental for the quality of the media with respect to vitamin and amino acid. So, if you if you increase the high temperature since you are exposed it for a lower period of time we can maintain the quality of the media in the better way that is why that that we follow in the industry. Now, uh, what I want to discuss here that how we can find out the activation energy. What is the activation energy the energy required to uh, uh, to uh, have this reaction what is the uh, energy required. So, the uh, to solve this problem that uh, what I want to tell that uh, if you look at uh, this rate rate of uh, reaction this is d a by d t equal to k into c a am I right. 
So, so if you if you look at the CACA that is cancelled, so your rate constant k basically it is inversely proportional with time. This is inversely proportional with time. So, so uh, now here this is the this is the problem that is given. Now, uh, now we know the Arrhenius. What is the Arrhenius equation that we have? Arrhenius equation we have the k equal to a to the power e to the power minus e a by r t. Now, at different temperatures, we have different array uh, the, that k 1 the, the suppose this is k 1, this is t 1 and if you can write k 2, we have a e to the power e a by r t 2. Am I right? Now, this is equal to I told you this is inversely proportional to, to this is t 1 and this is 1 by t 2. Am I right? So, if we, if, we, if, we, if we write this, then we, we can if we solve this, we can get this equation that ln t 1 by t 2 equal to E a by r 1 by T a. So, in this equation, if we put the value of T a uh, in terms of minutes, then and uh, we can easily calculate the value of E a that is the activation energy required for this, uh, for this process, you can easily find it out. Next problem that we have that is a liquid uh, A decomposed uh, uh, by the first order kinetics. This is the first order kinetics and in a batch reaction reactor 50 percent of A is converted uh, in 5 minutes run and uh, how much longer it will take for 75 percent conversion. So, this is uh, this is uh, so we we know the fraction that the x a is what x a equal to c a 0 minus c a by c a 0. This is the called fraction. So, if you say this is 50 percent conversion, then x a will be what the 0 0.50 and what the, if you say 75 percent conversion, this what we can write this is equal to point. 7, 5. So, this is exactly what is yes, written there at uh, at 5 minutes is 0 0.5 and x 2 is 0 0.75 and what is the rate expression that we have that uh, a minus r a equal to minus d c a by d t into k into 0. This is because this is the follow the first order kinetics. Now, this is uh, this is the equation that we have this is from this if you if you solve it we can get this equation l n. So, your ultimate equation is l n c a. Uh, C A 0 into K. Now, what is the C A? C A equal to C A 0 into 1 minus X A. Am I right? So, if you if you put this here, then what you will get L n C A 0 into 1 minus X A by C A 0 equal to K into T. So, this this will cancel. So, what you will get minus L n 1 minus x a divided by 1 equal to k into d. Now, this is what exactly we, we, we this is this I, I, I told you this is exactly what you get this is, I, I understand this. Now, uh, at the different uh, so since our expression is like this. So, at uh, so this is what we have minus we can have minus l n 1 minus x a k into t. Now, <coughs> if we use the t 1, then it will be x 1 t x 1 and if t 2 1 minus x a 2 equal to k into t 2. Now, if you take the ratio t 2 by t 1, how we can write minus l n x 2 by 1 minus x a 1. <coughs> Sorry. Now, this is exactly what we, we get here and then uh, we, we have the expression for t 2. What is the expression for t 2? t 2 is the like this t 2 equal to t 1 into l n 1 minus this one and this is uh, this is another expression that we have. 
the uh, the ln one minus a x one. Now we know at uh, t one what is the x a value, and we want to know seventy five percent conversion. What is the time is required? Just we can put the value, we can get the results. So we find out the time as ten minutes. So seventy five percent conversion. Uh, we require ten minutes time. This is how we can solve it very easily. So, so in this uh, particular uh, lecture, what uh, I try to cover, I try to cover that uh, uh, couple of numerical problems. Uh, first problems uh, I deal with uh, this uh, irreversible reaction that uh, for the simple first order reaction. That if you know the rate constant at a particular substrate concentration, then we can find out the rate constant at the different concentration that we can find out. Now, <coughs> second uh, problem that we try to find out that if we, in the human system we we know that uh, how much energy we are consuming per uh, per day, and and if we consider that glucose as a source of energy, from that we can easily calculate. What is the uh, uh, what is the molecular oxygen consumption that take place uh, by the human beings, and 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 third uh, problem that I deals with the pasteurization process. Pasteurization process basically, uh, I told you it is um, it deals with the uh, killing of pathogenic organism. Now it has been observed that HTST technique is uh, more useful. Uh, for the uh, for uh, for this pasteurization process because effective uh, why it is effective because you are exposing the uh, the uh, food material for smaller time so since uh, we we know the deactivation energy required for the uh, amino acid and vitamins are very less uh, as compared to uh, that of uh, the microorganism killing of microorganism so naturally at low temperature it is more detrimental to the quality of the uh, of, uh, of the material rather than the killing of organism so <clears throat> that is why the high temperature always we required low uh, smaller time for killing the pathogenic organism so <clears throat> this problem deals with that and we try to find out what should be the activation energy required uh, for this particular process and and second uh, Uh, and last problem that we we also uh, try to find out at uh, at a particular time. Suppose in a problem that is given that uh, 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 at five minutes time that fifty percent conversion is there, then if we if we want to find out that how much conversion is required, uh, if you have seventy five percent convert con required for seventy five conversion of substrate. Now this is very important as per. Chemical and biochemical reaction is concerned because because when you when you carry out any kind of chemical and biochemical reactions, we always try to we we want to know how much is required first because as you know that as per industry is concerned that uh, we always uh, look for high conversion efficiency because uh, why we look for high conversion efficiency because if you have high conversion efficiency then then uh, then. Uh, Then amount of uh, that you know substrate uh, remain in the effluent will be comparatively less, and if the amount of uh, organic matter present in the uh, in the in the effluent is less, you know, it gives the less load to the effluent treatment process. But uh, but if you if you look at uh, look at uh, uh, this uh, 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 that you know that uh, other other processes that uh, uh, that. Uh, Uh, the now question comes that if you go for the higher uh, conversion or higher percentage of conversion which is whether it is really economic to the process so all this uh, consequence i think at the end we'll discuss in all of my uh, present lecture this course i shall discuss those issue that if you increase the conversion efficiency of the process whether it is really help us 
or the economic of the process because this is very important because we will find that one way we are reducing the load to the uh, uh, wastewater treatment process by the other, by, by, that is true but uh, whether it is going to affect the economy of the process so you know that those are the different things we will deal with at the at the later part of my uh, presentation thank you very much